So moving forward, uh, again, I'm not going to uh, go through the minutia of showing you how to apply like a structural truss framing system inside these shafts that we put in the corner. I'll show you the just kind of the, the first part of breaking it down, and then we'll go through and um, I'm going to show you really how does it get applied to the, the, the massing elements. Um, <clears throat> All right, so uh, first and foremost, you have these four extrusions, and these four extrusions are coming out as four items in a singular list. That's fine, um, and it's actually somewhat desirable because what we can do is um, break those down individually, and we can isolate each individual um, group of elements however we choose, essentially. So um, if I wanted to grab just the four um verticals on these surfaces so that it can use it to develop a point list, which is then going to be used to develop the structural framework, um, I can do that rather easily. So I'll go to um, list item, I think. Let's see, how many is it giving me? 12. Yeah, that makes sense. So with list item, and I'm not going to flatten it, I'm going to do a slider from 0 to uh, 11, and what that's going to allow me to do is isolate which numbers I need to identify the edges that I want to grab. So this, this list item right here happens to be the bottom edge, bottom uh, left edge of the form. You can't see it on screen very well, but um, it's there. This one is the bottom right. Number two is going to be in the back. Number three is going to be on the back left. Then number four is going to be your first vertical. That's this one right here. So that's you want to keep that in mind. Number four. Number five is a top line, so not number five. Number six is the right corner closest to us. Seven is a top line. Eight is on the side. So we've got four. Um, what was it? Four, six, and eight. Four, seven. Four, seven. Seven. Uh, yeah, four, six, and eight. 4, 6, and 8, and then 9 and 10 should be on the back side. Okay, so we want 4, 6, 8, and 10. <clears throat> so I'll drop a panel in there to isolate this. Four, six, eight, ten. There we go. And then um, I have the ability to uh, take those um, lines and break them apart. So I can go to curve, division, divide curve, and I'll divide all of those curves, and I'll divide it by a slider of um, 0 to 15. I don't know how many I'm going to need, but... All right, five will probably be enough, I guess. I might need more than that, actually. Eight. So that's tough for you guys to see on screen again. I know, I'm sorry, but um, when you turn this stuff off, you'll have the framework only. We can leave that on. Okay. So um, what we have now uh, are groups of, of um, nine lines. So breaking them apart, restructuring them is going to kind of take a little bit of um, you know, practice, I guess you could say, um, learning how to break it apart. In fact, what you might wind up doing is just list iteming each um, particular line set separately and then mapping them together in certain ways. And so that's the component that I'm going to leave on the side for now okay unless there are major objections and you want to see something on it immediately but that's not the important part I want to get to in this exercise no objections okay all right so um, I'm going to label this as um, structural trust base
And what I'm going to work on is going to be a combination of these two extrudes. So they're, they're very, very important to understand how they operate. Um, and most notably, I want you to be aware of the, the first step here is cutting a floor plate. Cutting a floor plate is, is interesting because you can do it in an automated fashion and you can do it in such a way that it kind of integrates exactly into your building in a very clean and flush way. So I want you to understand a little bit about this. Um, so uh, first and foremost, turn the points off so this becomes a little bit more clear to understand. And I'm going to need you to cap the extrusion here because that is not a solid right now. So go to surface utility cap holes. You can turn the original off. So here's what we have. We have uh, two sets of solids. We have the inboard solids of the structural framework and we have the uh, overall massing of the building, which is essentially just a, a, a block right now. It's an extruded uh, rectangle. So if I have a floor plate that will not um, coincide with the structural um, framework. Essentially, if I have my mass looks like this and I have my structural member going in here, um, I need to essentially cut this out of the floor plate when I create it. Otherwise, I'm going to have a conflict, right? More or less. <clears throat> so that's a function of what? Trim is close, but trim leaves a void in the surface. Boolean difference in yeah in um, in Rhino it's a Boolean difference, but in Grasshopper it's under intersect and it's under shape and it's called solid difference. Same thing, different name. So solid difference is going to take your uh, cap element and it's going to subtract this from it, and I'll turn these off temporarily so you can see. But what it does is it made a, a subtraction of those structural elements. Pretty neat, right? All right. Um, so from here, we're going to use this as a way to uh, start to generate some floor plates and I'm going to put some substructure, just some very, very basic substructure under the floors. Um, what questions do you have so far? None? Okay. <laughs> 